What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and after all the anticipation, all the leaks and rumors, we finally have the brand new Logitech G Pro X Lightspeed Plus, as well as the Lightspeed X release. So bringing back one of the fan favorites, I'll safely say, the G502 Mice. Now before you roll your eyes, yes, believe it or not, the G502, despite its heavier weight, was one of the top selling most popular mice ever. Now granted, since its rise, the mouse market has changed a lot, like almost at a complete 180. Mice have gotten smaller, they've gotten lighter, they've gotten lighter, they've gotten lighter, and they've gotten lighter. But that doesn't stop Logitech from refining the G502 series and bringing us a brand new iteration into their lineup. So checking it out at first glance, yeah, this looks very, very similar to the G502. All three previous versions, pretty much. There are some subtle differences, sure. We do have this integrated RGB light strip on the palm rest, which sort of breaks up the shell into three different parts. The thumb rest section is still rubberized, although it's a more simple looking line design versus the tessellated texture. Right above that for the sniper button, that's now removable. Kind of like what we saw on the Glorious Model I. This sniper button can pop off. It's kept in place by these two plastic pegs and a little magnet there. And if you don't want this sniper button, you could swap it out with one of their non-clickable rubberized button, which pretty much deletes it. Worth noting, by the way, that sniper button paddle is reversible, so it can sort of flare towards your thumb or flare out if you have larger hands. You still have that hyper fast scrolling, but the materials now are lighter and less metal like they used to be. Speaking of which, right above the scroll wheel, it's now kind of filled in with this piece of plastic. So you have less of those aggressive sharp angles on the clicks. Doesn't really seem necessary, personally. Then lastly, for some of the physical changes, we finally have a USB-C port for charging. And then for the feet underneath, no more of that standard scratchy Teflon. It's now 100% pure PTFE feet for less friction and a more smooth glide. Now in terms of dimensions and stuff, this is obviously an ergonomic shape. Now from that front angled point to the back, it's 131 millimeters long, 77 millimeters at its widest point from the right hip all the way to the flare out on the thumb rest. That middle grip is more so around 60 millimeters wide. Top to bottom of the shell is 39 millimeters. Then around 26 and a half millimeters in height from the scroll wheel down. The plus tips my scale at 103-ish grams, call it 104, even though it's advertised as 106. And the X was just around 102, which it is advertised at. But as you probably noticed here on the white X version, there is no RGB light strip on the body. So that's where that weight difference is obviously coming from. I still don't get this plastic shroud here though. It's gotta be adding like an unnecessary gram or two, right? I don't know. So again, for those physical dimensions, really not too different from the original G502 Lightspeed and all models before it. So still nice and familiar. Now in 2019, when the Lightspeed first released, you know, it was still on the heavier side. That was sort of the rise of the lightweight wireless trend. I believe it cut like 14 grams, something like that. So it was down to 114 and it was like, whoa, at the time, like, yeah, pretty good. Now we're still on the heavier side here, like I said, at 106 grams. Uh, but I will say it does feel noticeably lighter in the hand probably partly due to the fact that the scroll wheel here was much more on the beefy side, you could say, but I will say definitely feels lighter. If I had to pinpoint it, I would say it feels more so around the 90 gram region. Coming from a mouse that I use now, which is in the 50s, this I would not say feels over 100 grams, even though it is. Now, one of the big changes I noticed right away when comparing it to the 2019 model are their brand new hybrid optical switches that are super satisfyingly crisp and tactile. I'll do a sound test now of all the switches and everything because you're going to want to hear this. I mean, this feels nice. There is this really unique 
crisp that it has that I haven't felt before. I don't know too, too much about the internals of this new switch and all that. I didn't get any specific press info just on these switches like some companies usually do, but I can hands down say they feel very unique and very different than other switches out there. Super tactile. Now underneath the hood, we still have that Hero 25K sensor, but they are touting new tech inside that once combined now with this 25K sensor and the new optical switches, performance and response times are 68% faster than the previous Lightspeed mouse. Very interesting since on paper, it's the same sensor and 68% faster is definitely a pretty big claim, but that is one of the benefits now of the new Light Force tech. So I've had these in for about two weeks now. I'd say between the two, I use this for about a week, this for about a week, you know, going in between to try to really pinpoint if there was a major difference between them. But I'll say just for using it, you know, uh, really not too much of a physical feel between the two different models. Now I feel like I'm getting super repetitive when I say this, but you guys know I'm a G502 lover have been from the very beginning. And even though I pretty much transitioned uh, back in what, 2019, once the Viper came out, and then yes, I also followed the lightweight trend out there and I've differently sort of shifted my preferences. Still going back to this mouse still feels so good. I told you guys, I've used it for so, so long. All the early versions since I believe, what, 2013 when I first picked it up. So you gotta remember, I had like five, six years of muscle memory with this mouse and just the way it felt in my hand. So there's always gonna be a part of me that going back and using this is just gonna be, you know, ah, feels good. But like I said, it is way different than what I'm used to now, mainly going back and forth between the brand new Pulsar X2 Mini and the Viper V2 Pro from Razer, which are obviously much smaller and lightweight than these new mice are. But again, can I sit here and tell you that this mouse negatively impacted my gameplay because of the weight and size? No, that's just not really how that works. Sure, if you're using like a super lightweight mouse that is the perfect fit for your hand, you're gonna get better with repetition and accuracy just over time once you build that repetition. Yeah, the same can be said for any mouse that you try, you know? It's all about not the weight, not the features, shape. So for some people, this shape is gonna be king. For others, it might not be. So whenever I see people, you know, clowning on me because I've said I've used G502 or that, you know, I liked it for a while and they're using some fingertip 20 gram mouse that they claim is the best thing ever. Listen, I'll clap your cheeks either way, all right? No, but really, like this mouse feels great. I can't say, you know, that I noticed like this was faster than anything I've used or faster than the previous mice, even though they're using a new sensor and wireless tech. Can't really say that, but these new tactile sort of hybrid optical switches, they call it, definitely felt nice. Are you gonna notice it's 68% faster, like they said in the last version? Um, no, not unless you're a robot. Like I said, the biggest difference is hands down the switches here. And like I said earlier, I really didn't notice a difference at all between the two models here with the Lightspeed X and the Lightspeed X Plus. All right, so at the end of the day, wrapping this all up, I'll leave you with this, but don't close out yet. I'm gonna need your help coming up, all right? Got two points for you. First up is, I'll admit, I'm very happy we do have a refined, refreshed version of the G502. You guys know I loved it this entire time, and I'm happy to see it's more so of the same, but like I said, sort of more modernized and refined for 2022, and they didn't drastically change it up, kind of like Razer did with their iconic Death Adder shape, where they changed it for the last V3 Pro. So more of the same here, more modern, and also at the same time, Yes, this mouse has been memed in the community. You know, think about it. As many people out there who love a small, lightweight mouse, there's just as many people out there who prefer a larger mouse, a heavier mouse for bigger hands, just who are more used to that shape. So people can hate on it all they want. There's a reason why this is a staple in the mouse market and really why since its release, this you know whole iteration has been one of the top selling mice in the market. So happy to see a brand new version. Now, where I'm confused is why they made three versions for this, okay? We have a wired version. And as I showed you before, we have the G502 Lightspeed X and the Lightspeed X Plus. And from what I can tell, just the main differences here are is that the Plus has RGB and it's 106 grams at $160, whereas the Lightspeed just has no RGB for 102 grams, four grams lighter and $140. So 
Is that the main difference? Are people gonna wanna spend a premium for just for RGB when it's the same mouse, the same layout, same buttons, same internals, same sensor, all that, just a $20 price difference here for RGB. That's what's really, really confusing me. So my call to action for you guys is, I wanna hear your thoughts down below. Which option are you more likely to buy? Are you gonna pick up the flagship option for a premium price at 160? Or are you fine with shedding RGB, shedding weight and having a heavier wallet because it's 20 bucks left at 140? Please let me know because like I said, this is more so a first look type of video. I wanna do a dedicated review on a more in-depth look and experience with the mouse, but I wanna figure out which is the more popular model first. I've been using the Plus for my gaming and stuff, but uh, it's just, it's leaving me scratching my head for the difference of price and RGB. And let's, let's be real, 160 is insane, right? I gave Razer a bunch of crap for the V2 Pro and the Death Adder V3 Pro, and that was 150. So $10 premium here, I don't know. I don't know. So let me hear your thoughts down below. Regardless, I'm happy to see the G502 is still alive and kicking after all these years. And guys, that'll wrap it up for my look at the brand new G502 Lightspeed X and X Plus. Hope you all enjoyed. If you wanna check them out, I'll have a link for you in the description down below. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.